Hello there, science friends, and welcome once again to Photoshop for the Scientist. It's a pleasure, uh, pleasure to have you here. So in today's video, which is part two of how to make a scientific poster, this video is following part 1.5, I will, uh, as promised, show you how to, how to add in figures and text into your poster. Um, so if you watch the other videos of this little mini-series, you may notice that things look a little different here. Uh, I went ahead and applied a particular style to all of my boxes here, and changed the color from blue to green, because I thought, uh, once I had changed them all, I thought the blue uh, accents here and then the blue background just seemed a little boring. Um, I've also put in a little logo placeholder, which if uh, I find I usually end up putting my institution and sponsor logos up in the corner here. Then I've got some just placeholder text for my title and author affiliation. Obviously, if you're making your own poster, you can kind of go your own way with however you want to set things up, but this is where we're at today. Um, so if we're getting into it now here, uh, usually when you're adding figures to a poster, um, one of the most common figures you're going to be adding is probably a graph of some sort. So this graph could come from anywhere, maybe Excel or Google Docs or SPSS or whatever else you're using to create your graphs. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to bring something in from Excel, because I think it's probably the most common. Um, and I have a sheet here just from a vid one of my, I think, advanced videos about how to create a standard curve. And you may be tempted to cut and just like cut and paste this graph into Photoshop, um, which might be your strategy if you're building your poster inside PowerPoint. Um, well, you certainly can do that. I don't think it's your best option, because you might run into some problems with resolution. Um, it's going to be harder to resize. Uh, I think a better way to work is to first convert this into a PDF, which PDFs tend to work pretty well in Adobe programs. So if we want to do that, uh, we can just right-click this guy and say Move Chart, and I'm going to move it into its own sheet. And obviously, when we look at it like this, we can tell right away that the text and the markers are going to be way too small for a poster. Um, so I will say this is maybe one of the downsides of making a poster in Photoshop, um, because if we are making our poster in uh, PowerPoint, because of the way all the Office programs work together, it's pretty easy to make changes kind of on the fly. Um, you can bounce back and forth programs pretty easily. Uh, when we're working in Photoshop, uh, we kind of need to make our decisions at the beginning about how we want things to look, because it's not as easy to go back and make changes. Um, so that said, I know that this text needs to be a lot bigger and the markers need to be a lot bigger. And so to do that, I'm just going to go and bump it up to something almost obnoxiously large um, because obviously we want to make sure that it's readable from a distance so don't be afraid to really go kind of over the top um, and then if we change our markers here I'm just going to say format data series and go to my marker options here and then I'm just going to crank this up to something again almost obnoxiously large so 20 I think looks pretty good I'm just going to do the same thing for my other markers And, you know, it may require a bit of trial and error when you're first starting out to um, find something that works well and is sized correctly for your poster, but uh, for my tinkering around, this seems to work pretty well. Um, so once we have the sizes that we like, we want to say Save As, and we want to save it as a PDF, uh, which we can do just by selecting PDF here. And you can see I've already gone ahead and done it, but I'll just save over top of this one. Yes, I would like to replace it. And I'm going to minimize that for now. And so in terms of getting it into Photoshop, I mean, there's lots of things you can do. Uh, you can go up and say File, Place, uh, Embedded, which will place the file into your document. But for me, I find the way I usually end up working is just going into my folder and just dragging it into Photoshop. So if I do that, I can just pull that in here. And we're going to get this little Open a Smart Object dialog box. Uh, and I'm just going to say OK. It's fine. And we can see that we have our graph just like that. And as it is now, I think it's probably too large. So one of the great things about Photoshop, um, which is a little harder to do in PowerPoint, I think you can still do it, but uh, I like being right up here to specify how big I want this to be. So let's say I want this uh, graph to be maybe about six inches or so uh, wide. So I can just type in six inches right in my import box here. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> this is just going to stay as percent. Um, I'm sure there's a way to see how big it is in inches, but uh, I know that it's going to be rectangle, <laughs> so I'm going to hit plus or the sorry the check mark there, and that will bring it into my document. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here with Control Plus, 
And I think I might also want to add just a stroke around the outside to add a little border. So we can do that the same as we would with anything else with the little effects uh, button here. And we'll choose stroke. And then we'll bring this over. And uh, yeah, like a one pixel stroke around the outside. Uh, we'll just put it in the center is fine. I just want to have kind of a nice uh, delineating border here. So I'm going to zoom out a, a little bit. And now it's really just a matter of moving it around uh, and placing it where we want it to be. So uh, because I don't really have any actual plan of what I'm doing here, I'm just going to put it there. Uh, so that is looking good. Uh, so that's one graph in. And you go ahead and just do this for all of your other graphs. You may find that you want to resize things. Uh, maybe if you have multiple graphs, you might want to size them down to, I don't know, two inches if you want to put a couple across. Again, like I said, it's just a, a little bit of a, a trial and error process. But once you dial in the settings that you find work, uh, I think it'll be pretty easy to apply them to all of your other graphs. Which actually does bring me to another good point. And when you're creating this poster and when you're working, it's good just to put all of your documents inside one folder. Um, you might have many folders that you're working from when you're bringing all your data together. But I find like if you copy and paste uh, your Excel files and your other figures into the poster folder that you're working on, then it just keeps things organized to everything in one place. Um, okay, so what do I want to do next? Um, let's say you've got your figure in and you want to start adding some text. So uh, there's a couple different ways you can work here. Um, you can either create individual text boxes, uh, which might be the intuitive way to go. And in fact, it might be the best way to go. But one thing I just want to show you, uh, just to give you some more options or some more tools to work with, is that you can create kind of custom shape text boxes by using the shape tool. So if we go to the shape tool, and yeah, I'm just going to choose rectangle. And I want to set it to path instead of shape. And then I also want to set uh, this little combination thing here from combine shapes or a new layer to subtract from shape. And what I want to do here is kind of draw kind of the bounding area of where I want my text to appear. And But I also want to make sure that I don't have any text going over or behind this graph. So I want to sort of cut out an area here. And so now if I go to my text tool, and hold it into this path box here, you can see the little dotted circle around it. And that means that my text is going to be written inside of this path. And so if I click in here, and I'm just going to randomly generate some text here. It's a little noisy, but I just want to demonstrate how um, my text uh, gets wrapped around that figure uh, really nicely. So if I'm happy with that, I'll just click my little check mark again. And uh, I just want to point out, too, that this uh, path here is not going to be visible. As soon as we switch to something else, um, it disappears. And at any point, you can go in and change uh, how the path looks. So you can take the direct selection tool. Oopsie daisy. And I'll go into paths here. And if I click my text box here, and then click uh, the corners here, you can have uh, full control over these corners. I'm just shift clicking here. And then if you want to drag them down, or if you want to maybe uh, make this little cutout area a little bit bigger. Uh, you just want to make sure you have both uh, little boxes here selected, and you can pull that across. So I just wanted to demonstrate uh, the kind of options that you have with your text here. If you wanted to get really fancy, um, you can take the pen tool and, uh, man, how do you do this? Give me one second. Right, okay, so if you wanted to get really fancy, uh, you can just stay with your white arrow tool, and then you can select the path, or sorry, just right click it, and then it might have fallen off the screen here, maybe not, um, but you'll see this add anchor point here. And that's gonna drop out an anchor point, um, which if you're familiar with working with paths or the pen tool at all, that will be uh, nothing new to you. But it'll add the anchor point into your path, and then you can do things like drag it around and create sort of fancy, I don't know, why you'd want to do this, but if you have uh, weird shaped figures, then you can create kind of weird shaped text boxes to wrap around things. So again, it's just kind of a matter of seeing what you need, uh, maybe doing something a little interesting or a little more creative just to, uh, I don't know, just to put something different or a little more interesting to look at. Um, okay, I think that covers what I wanted to cover for text. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show 
uh, is if you have another kind of figure. Um, I know I was o would always have a lot of like immunofluorescence figures. And one of the great things about staying inside Photoshop is that you can drag your uh, Photoshop figures, or if you built a figure inside Photoshop, you can just drag that Photoshop file right into your poster. Um, so for example, I have a figure here from one of my earlier videos, and just like I did with the um, graph PDF, I'm just going to drag this right into uh, my poster, and I'm just going to resize it again, I think with the same strategy. Maybe I'll say, come on now, yeah, I'll just go with 6 inches again. Nah, actually, let's crank it up a bit. Not 16, I'm going to go with 10 inches. And then I'll hit the check mark, and then we can drag this guy over. And so it's handy that we have it here like this, uh, because it's been imported as a smart object. So say if we do need to go in here and make some adjustments for whatever reason, all we need to do is double click this smart object. Uh, I don't mean I don't need to update my text layers for now, so I'm going to hit no. But it brings me right into my actual figure. So if I need to go and maybe like move this arrow from one spot to another, um, I can do that very easily. And that's something you wouldn't be able to do in PowerPoint. So, um, of course, if that's unless you'd <laughs> build your figures in PowerPoint to begin with. But, um, And then you can just close it, and yes, we want to save, and it will be updated accordingly here. So uh, it's a really handy way of working, and also it just like keeps everything really organized within this one smart object. And speaking of keeping organized, I think the last point that I'll make here is that uh, I have all of my background elements in this uh, folder called background layout copy, but I'm going to want to do the same thing for all of my foreground elements um, because it's going to help me keep organized. So my crazy text layer here in my graph that I imported, I'm going to select both of those and hit Control G to group them, and then I'm just going to call this results one. Um, to remind myself that it's in the results one box. Similarly, uh, I know it's only one layer right now, but I'm going to do the same thing and call this results two. And although it doesn't really look too necessary right now, uh, let me tell you, once you get text and little individual figures and other sort of design elements in all of these boxes, uh, you're really going to thank yourself for keeping things organized. So I'll just hit control zero to view the whole poster. And I think that pretty much does it for today. Um, I think I've shown you really all of kind of the basics, all of the basics that you need to build a poster. And now it's kind of just up to you to um, use your own figures and put in your own text and uh, try it out for yourself. I think I'll probably do one more video in this series uh, where I'll just talk about a few maybe other design ideas or another or some other little uh, creative things that you can try just from posters that I've seen over the years. Um, but for now, you should have the skills to just make a basic looking poster and a good looking poster inside Photoshop. So with that, uh, I think we'll call it a day. Uh, I guess as always, before I sign off now, I will remind you of my Patreon page that I have set up. Uh, if you would uh, care to support the videos or support the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, it would be nice to know there are people out there that find these videos useful. Um, and you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. And I'll also say that there are rewards uh, on my Patreon page. Uh, things like um, extra videos or uh, having access to all of the files that I use in my videos, which could be helpful maybe. Um, but yeah, uh, if you can donate, great. But if not, then it's all good. So for that, uh, with that, I guess we'll sign off as always by saying uh, you are trying to get that data of yours. So why not work a little harder and get it into Photoshop so that it looks amazing. Alright folks, that's it for today. I will see you next time.